Hi there, my name is Tom. The reason I like to do this, I like to cook. I love to eat. But I love to play. Swiss steak, a wonderful meal for beef lovers. And uh, pause your directions here if you want to, or your contents, your ingredients. Almost any kind of beef works. It's all going to get tender. I'm using London broil. You can use any good quality beef. Doesn't matter. A pepper, an onion, a couple of cans of tomato sauce. Uh, obviously, I've got some salt and pepper there. And most importantly is I have a bag of flour. I'll tell you what to do with that in just a moment. All right, first of all, you want to cut up your meat, make sure that it's all cleaned up and trimmed. And then what you want to do is take about a half to three quarters of a cup of flour, put it in a plastic bag, and throw all the meat into it. This is how you make Swiss steak, because what it's going to do is it's going to let you braise the beef, it's going to help to make the sauce, and it's, it's important that you, you try it my way. You've got to put the beef, it's all cut up into little bite-sized pieces, into the bag, close the bag, leave some air in it and then juggle it around. You'll find a little leftover piece there, no problem. We just pick it up and throw it back in again here. Close it and shuffle that thing around. Move it all over the place, any place you want. That's it, just shuffle it. Mix it all up. So it covers every piece of meat. Then what you want to do is you want to uh, season your pan, of course, and then put some extra oil into one fry pan. And what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the meat out, but leaving the excess flour in the bag. You don't want to dump the bag of extra flour into the pan. It'll come out too pasty. What you want to do is you just want to cover the meat, get all the little pieces out of there. And you'll see there's a little bit of flour left, but that's OK. The extra flour, toss it. You're done with it. Okay, the next step, I like to clean the breadboard. Cross-contamination is a problem when you're cooking for flavors as well as health reasons. So I, uh, I washed it in the sink, actually, before I saw you. But then I also used my veggie spray on it. Again, I think it's a great idea to keep that veggie spray around. Just keep things nice and clean. Okay, now we're going to put some more oil on top of the beef that we have put into the fry pan. And we're going to take another fry pan, small one, and we're going to put into it with some oil, some cut up peppers, bite sized, not too small, and some onions. The next part here is uh, where we really get the tender meat to take place because we're going to be both stovetop cooking and baking. What you do is you simply, uh, on medium heat, braise the beef, that's lightly cooked and dump it right into the pan, right at the bottom of the pan. I'm making sure that everything is, I'm doing that, I'm making sure that everything is indeed at least braised a little bit. There we go. Nice. Move the uh, pot that you just poured in the braised beef over to uh, an unlighted burner. and pour the juice from the braised beef right over the peppers and onions. And move that pan to an appropriate burner, as I told you before, the correct size. Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of braise that uh, peppers and the onions, but remember we poured in the extra juice. By the way, look, look at the pan. That's the pan we had the beef in. Look how clean that is. I mean, the coating really works if you season it correctly. Yeah, it's very important that you take the extra juice. When you put the uh, beef into the big pot, you take the extra juice and oil, and you put it right into the uh, cooking of the vegetables, pepper and uh, the onions. And if you feel as though you want to add a little bit more oil to that, no problem. So you can see what we have here is we simply have the lower section of the pan is covered completely with the braised beef. Then 
we top the braised beef with the slightly cooked onions and peppers. You can put a little garlic in there too if you like it. Flatten it down a little bit with your spatula or your cooking spoon, whatever you're using. My slotted cooking spoon there. Pour in the tomato sauce right over the top. Then dice tomatoes over the top. So we've actually covered the meat and the vegetables with the sauce on the top. It will eat down as it cooks and cover. Now this next part's important. Put it in at 300 only into the oven. Now the total cook time, you can see here, it's not very long at all. Two hours at 300 degrees. That is why the meat is going to come out absolutely melting in your mouth, and that's why it doesn't matter as long as you've got a good quality beef, what you use. It will melt in your mouth because that slow cooking makes it very tender. You can serve it in a big bowl where people can help themselves.